What's good people? It's Kay, and today we're reacting to Ruby, Volume 8, Chapter 8. It's funny, I've been cramming the first seven episodes of this season over the past week or so. So it doesn't really feel that special, the show's coming back, just because I've seen so much of it lately. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid. People have been talking a lot of shit about what we can expect for this second half of the season. I'm not amused. I'm not amused at all. I've been reading through the Demon Slayer manga as well. Like, I don't need more misery. I guess I'm gonna get it. I have no choice in the matter. Let's go. Oh, that, okay, 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 calm down, <laughs> calm down. Yep, not getting much sleep here either. Sounds bad out there. Hmm, no kid. Wait, it doesn't sound like... Ah, oh, shit. Wait a minute, what? Is that... Is that Raven? Is that Raven? Your friends are going to be just fine. Your friend? <laughs> she lost consciousness, and she's leaking. Set her down. That's a word down. for it. Don't worry about it, Brett. Even based on what you've told me, I hardly know what she is. <clears throat> but her basic anatomy seems similar enough. I can at least stitch up that wound. That's a start. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yes. Everyone okay back there? Just saw another bombing run light up the kingdom. She already like left. The city lost power. We're okay though. Sorry I couldn't stick around, but time is running out yeah. for everyone in the crater. No, we're Fair enough. Once we know what's wrong with Penny, we'll we'll do something. Don't beat yourself up, kid. Yeesh. Yo, man. Shit house. Yeah. Okay. Rin, the crater, Nora, Penny. How do we fix all of it? <laughs> One step at a time, my dear. Klein, please. You can't worry about fixing everything. Simply focus on what's in front of you. If you'd like some place to start, I'd be able to work faster if you could bring the power back on. Well, how would we... we have a generator near the edge of the estate? Well, hello there. <laughs> so of you to join us, mother. Yes. Believe it or not, I am above drinking in the dark. Really? Yeah. Hello, Klein. SDC executives have their own auxiliary power supplies in case of a citywide blackout. It's extremely unfair but perhaps now isn't such a bad time for company perks we don't just have perks hmm? we have the company the people you mentioned in the crater they need a way out right there are rows and rows of cargo ships just sitting in the hangars because of the embargo and our own automated drones like the ones at snowshoe shipping we can order as many as we need to pilot our ships down Look to the this. crater and get people to safety while the Grim are occupied with the General's forces. We can. Look at this. I can. Look at this. Father's computer. Then we definitely need to get the power back on. Clap for your boy. One time. One time for Whitley Schnee, bruh. Coming through. With the good ideas. Uh, I always know what to do, but 
that's never stopped you from doing something. I was like that as a girl, but time and a lot of other things took their toll on me. Yes. And then I wasn't sure if that kind of girl could actually survive in the world. Until I met you. It was a little strange at first because you were younger, but I've always looked up to you, Ruby. Oh. Uh, and I still do. Blake. Look at this. Thanks, Blake. Hmm. That's pretty cool, to be honest. What? Oh shit. What was that? Oh boy. You know what? I'm right there with you, Willow. I'm right there with you. Can you handle this? Assuming you can handle that. We still I see you. I see you. <laughs> Oh dear. It's the freaking hound. Oh boy. this thing? It's just a grim. Just focus. The hound's theme is wild. What? I don't have captions on, I don't know what it said. Yo! Taken Ruby? I'm nervous. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. Oh shit. Oh shit. Come back. Goodness, try not to... Oh. No, not again. Yeah, she's gonna wreck shot, man. I'm telling you, what I say last time. She's gonna be so OP. No. Is she gonna take Ruby? Damn. For fuck's sake. The hell is this? Oh dear. Oh my god. What is this horror movie shit? We're going back to. Oh. Damn! Don't you wag your tongue at me, bruh. Old room. I, you 
can kill it. Can't you? What is it doing? Theoretically. I'm not sure. It's acting strange. Why is it here? It doesn't matter. Just keep an eye on it so I can track it down. Right. Right. Okay. It's moving again. Heading towards... Mm-hmm. Bruh. It's like the video of that lion opening the the car door. I know. <laughs> Goodness. Run! Is that Will? It was. Oh my goodness. Huh. <sighs> Why it's been able to win another fight? Yeah, that's a good question, Blake. Bad not. Yeah, boy. I could hear you. <sighs> it's, it's too much. That was Penny, wasn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Do you reckon Penny will fight the hound though? Do you reckon that's what's gonna happen? I must open the vault. And then self terminate. I don't think she destroyed it though. Chanting. It did. Oh my god. What was that? That confirms it. She's been turning. She's trying to turn 
humans into Grimm. Or people into Grimm, yeah. Uh, nothing's off the table now. Yeah, that was wild. Uh, here we go. This may be the first time I've ever been happy to see you. Mm. What do we got now? My turn to ask for something. It's her. Oh. Don't need to see you all. What happened to the others? What happened to the others? Uh Yeah, that episode was crazy. I'm surprised they beat the Hound. I wasn't expecting that to happen so soon, you know. Alright. Alright, review time. This sort of horror movie, We're Not Alone, fucking Freddy Krueger shit. I can't, man. <laughs> I'm not a horror person. There's only so much I can handle. Doesn't help that all these characters are just beacons for stress. And I thought that episode back in volume 6 with the apathy was trying to kill me. I like this episode though. I might have liked it more if the prison break stuff wasn't so abbreviated, wasn't so deliberately confusing. Those two scenes bookending the episode felt weird. Everything else in and around the Schnee Manor was well done. Today I want to talk about an idea again and I struggled to find the one word for it, so I've already kind of failed the point of this segment, but regardless. Weiss, Whitley, Willow, Ruby, Blake, Penny, and Nora. All these characters experience moments of clarification in this episode, moments which drill down to the bedrock of who they are. Some moments are smaller or more fleeting than others, but that doesn't matter. Importantly, these moments stand up to the two primary conflicts of the Schnee Manor storyline in this episode, which we find in both The Hound and in Penny when her hack takes over. So we see Ruby and Blake find solace in each other, a dynamic we haven't seen all that much of previously. And I find that Blake, especially this season, has been a lot more level-headed than the people around her. When her friends are beleaguered and distracted, she always stays, trying to steer them back towards a more productive path. But in talking to Ruby, who is suffering from a crisis of confidence, she injects her personal experience. And it's interesting putting them together, because Blake is not a leader. She has led, but it's not a comfortable role for her. Meanwhile, Ruby is someone whose leadership was always based on what it might grow into, which was another way of telling us to expect a critical mistake here and there. Again, it's a good thing that Blake is someone who knows a thing or two about confronting past mistakes. It's also interesting to see the Schnee family in this episode, minus Jacques, adapting to their new reality. And in seeing them adapt, we see more of who they are when they're separated from the whole Schnee thing. Less so with Weiss, because we've already seen so much of her journey. This is more of like an end point for her. But we get to see that Whitley does care about things and people outside his bubble, and he's willing to factor them into his decision making. In fact, it does seem to be quite natural for him. We see that Willow, while nowhere near over any of her emotional wounds, can put them aside for just a moment when it comes time to help her children. Winter set the template for Weiss, Weiss rewrote the template for herself, and now the rest of her family is starting to see themselves in a new light. Meanwhile, we see Nora embracing her identity to buy Penny just a little more time. Something as simple and unflashy as just recalling an old bit of advice, or 
old conversation, and specifically the conversation from episode 3 this season. It's yet another reminder for Penny that she is more than the sum of her parts, more than what the people in her life have been expecting from her. And even though it's ultimately futile in this episode, I don't believe that this is the last time that Penny will have to face the concept of herself. In other words, I don't think she's too far gone. Speaking of the conflicts, the Hound represents something new, something else, something other than what we understand. It represents another stage in Salem's conquest, the assimilation of personhood, the destruction of character or self. Our heroes are being confronted with the possibility of a fate worse than being killed by a grin. They're being confronted with the possibility of one of their friends or family being turned into a new breed of monster. Ruby is being confronted with a Silver Eyes, someone who was supposed to be the bane of all Grimm, turned into one. And what if they're forced to fight Penny? That's another example of this new frontier that they haven't seen. They saw it a little with the drones back in Volume 3, but a hacked Penny would provide a more personal, more direct interrogation for them to handle. What's probably going to happen immediately is Cinder and Watts just showing up at the Schnee Manor, but that doesn't mean that a hacked penny fight won't happen. In fact, that actually means that it could be even more likely that it happens. Ready for some observations? I normally like to inject a bit of lightness into this segment, but looking over these, I mean, it's looking like a river run dry on this episode. Dark as fuck. I need to see more of this jailbreak sub story. I didn't love the way it was cut together this episode, but what it does is pose questions. Who actually broke in? Was that Cinder for sure? It looked more like she showed up after the break in and just found what's lying there. If so, then was that actually Raven? If she took the other three prisoners, then it would make sense as to why Cinder didn't run into them at all, but I just can't tell what happened there. More information, please. I wasn't expecting the Hound to be destroyed this early in the season, but it doesn't clear up Cinder's future any more than before. Salem is still planning something for her. I know it's been a minor theory here and there, but I think the revelation of the Hound's true form or origins brings us back around to the idea that Cinder might get turned into something similar. We'll see. It's still up in the air. But I know that after episode 6, I was certainly thinking that she would have to fight the Hound herself. Shows you what I know. I appreciate how things were left with May. She was getting really frustrated with the kids before, so it's good to see her pulling back from that all or nothing mindset and kind of speaking a bit more candidly about their prospects. Ruby got waxed for much of this fighting. There's not much more to add there, but it was just notable. I was anxious to see if Weiss would give us a good showing, action-wise. You know, we're all familiar with Weiss and her notoriously bad win-loss ratio, but alas, we didn't get to see that much of her. Blake did okay against that weird acid-spitting thing, even though it put her on the defensive and she technically lost. One-on-one -on -one action is almost always fun to see in the show and it was fun to see her using her clones again. On a more minor note with Penny, I appreciate the subtle differences between normal Penny and hacked Penny when she gets a little more stiff and robotic in her movements. I'm also still holding on to the idea that hacked Penny is just going to be a overpowered killer because we still haven't seen her fight but that prediction isn't looking so good after we just saw the hound straight up handle her. So what's on for the next? Hopefully we'll find out what happened with the prison break, and hopefully we'll find out in a way that won't annoy me, but I think it's more likely that we're just going to go back to the whale next. It's about that time for either Emerald or Hazel to use the lamp, and it's also about that time for Yang and her boom squad to enact their part of this Mass Effect 2 suicide mission. Come to think of it, I've been getting Mass Effect 2 vibes from a lot of this season. I said back in the first episode that the inside of the whale looked like the collector aesthetic. Then we get Winter in this bootleg N7 brace armor, and now we have her motley crew of weirdos running around on a suicide mission. So what happens at the end of the season? Winter cuts ties with the elusive man, I mean Ironwood, and then a whole gang of intergalactic spacefaring creatures will descend on the world. I've seen it. I'm calling it. I see what these people are doing. This Kruby. I'm on to y'all. Look, just handle the ending better than Mass Effect 3. That Faunus, by the way, the one inside the Hound. First off, at no point did I think it was fucking Adam of all people, which I've seen floating around a lot, though I was trying to rack my brain to see if, if he was anyone familiar. No, 
he's just some dude. Or at least that's what I first thought, because I didn't actually notice it the first time around. Silver Eye, file that one away for later. Look, I'm not saying that Summer Rose suffered a similar fate, but at this point, I'm also not not saying that. We are crossing the Rubicon, people, and I would not put it past this fucking show to pull something like that. This was the same show that suggested Weiss was going to be killed by Cinder after putting up maybe the worst fight we've ever seen from her. And if it's not going to be the summer thing, it's going to be something just as devastating to think about. I beg you, show, do your fucking worst. I'll be here for it, like someone who looks forward to tasting one of those ridiculous hot sauces. I do like a little bit of spice, you know, some food can be a bit bland and it needs that extra bit of a kick that I know back in high school my friends would get Nando's chicken with the extra hot and spicy sauce or whatever the highest level was. Nah sis, I'm not with that. Mm -mm. But I'm not gonna have a choice as far as this. This fucking show is just gonna keep giving me stress and misery and I'm just going to keep lapping it up. Am I a masochist? Is that what's going on here? I don't think I am, but maybe the story of my life would suggest otherwise. In closing, Dark is an episode about the self, an idea which Ruby is no stranger to exploring. And this is an episode which chooses to confront our heroes by asking real questions of their existential limits and bounds. What is a warrior of a light when he is consumed by the darkness and forced to work for it? What does the sum of a maiden's parts matter when one part could destroy her and everything she was born to protect? Who are we when forced to confront new, uncertain circumstances? Not to mention that this episode decides to present those questions in the form of a horror story, which I know does wonders for my stress levels. How about yours? That's how I'm feeling. The prison break arc brought this one down a little bit, and once you factor that in, the episode as a whole does feel a bit on the thin side, just a bit, but I'm not mad at it. Or maybe I am mad, but more so mad at what this show is doing to me as a whole, rather than the quality of this episode. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.